Hi there, Kerry here, and welcome back to the channel if you're a return viewer, and if you're new here, welcome. What we do on this channel is review books. I give my thoughts on a book, whether it's what's good for me, whether you should probably read it, and a little few details about the, uh, the, the, the book itself. Now, the book we're talking about today is this one, The Best of R.A. Lafferty. Now, R.A. Lafferty, I think it says on this book somewhere that his name was uh, Raphael Aloysius Lafferty, was a, a writer which I've only, only previously heard of in passing. Um, one of those writers, writers that all the uh, other science fiction and fantasy writers kind of uh, quote or um, give as, a, as, a, as an inspiration, but I'd never knowingly read anything of his before picking up this book. Um, if I had, I, I, it slipped past me who the author is. It's possible I wrote, read something in an old anthology, um, but I'm just not sure about that. So he's pretty much new to me. Um, now, he was born in 1914, but he didn't have a, a uh, story published until 1960. So it was only in the latter half of his life that he became a successful author. And he kind of uh, didn't become like a household name like many of his contemporaries around the year of the 60s and 70s. Now, like I said, everyone quotes him as being a major influence and, and uh, um, a, uh, a great source of wonder. Um, so I was interested in seeing exactly what he was like. Now, he got a bit of publicity when he died in... 2002. Um, I remember reading a few things about him as stuff like the, the best writer you've never heard of, that type of thing. And then th this book was compiled and published in 2019. And it got a bit more publicity along the same lines. People saying you, you may not have ever heard of this guy, but he is worth a read. And so I picked this up recently. It's uh, published in the Sci Fi Masterworks uh, series by Glance in the UK. I believe it is also published in a similar form in the uh, USA market. Um, so what did we find in inside? Well, basically the stories are very imaginative. A lot of them take the kind of style of, you may be familiar with like 19th to 20th century American tall tales type stories, where there's something extraordinary has been related to you by a friend of a friend of a, or someone who, who heard about it. And, in a, in a small town situation, that type of thing. Kind of, it's a mixture between like these tall tale type stories and maybe the Twilight Zone, the 50s, 60s type standard uh, twist in the tale or morality tale. There's a lot of morality stuff going on in these book, in this book. Um, and a lot of the stories, um, there's someone being hard done by and someone who caused that gets their comeuppance. Now there are 22 stories in this book. Um, I cannot recommend you read them all in one go. Um, I read this book in two main sessions and found it was a little tough going. Um, about halfway through I started to struggle a bit with the stories. The kind of whimsical, sameness, cynical type thing got a little too much. And I, I would recommend that you dip in and out of this book, uh, reading one or two stories at the time. Um, otherwise it may get a little too much. Now, I think these stories are basically uh, project, pro, uh, printed in a chronological order, um, going by the copyright page, it seems to be like that. And um, I think the actual, the earlier stories were the ones that resonated with me more. The later stories seem to be long and labor a point. Once a point has been made, it just keeps going or it will just finish suddenly. Now there's common themes in his books, um, mainly magic versus science, um, primitive peoples versus uh, colonizers, a um, lot of Native American Indian type stuff. Um, and he also seems to like the humiliation or the downfall of self-proclaimed experts. There's a lot of uh, uh, characters which seem to continue over from one story to another who may not be the same character but they have the same silly name so you instantly know who the person to be made fun of is in the story. That gets a little too much but um, you can see where he's coming from. Now there are 22 stories in this book and like I said the first 10 or so seem to have more impact on me. Now the, the ones that come to mind are the Narrow Valley and that's a very uh, 
famous one apparently. I, um, I was aware of the title but I had never read it before. Uh, it's about a um, Native American Indian who gets sick of land being uh, confiscated off them by the settlers. Um, makes a, a spell happen and gets it wrong and then uh, as a, an effect there's a, a weird space-time distortion um, in the land where he lives and the local people come to, to take the land and I think there's like a, a five meter gap between one side of the valley and the others but there's something really weird going on and all, all the consequences of that. Um, Another one that really struck me as imaginative and kind of surreal was the 900 Grandmothers. Uh, hard to explain and I won't try doing an explanation here. Um, it was just it was really weird and kept getting weirder. Another one, the Inter-Urban Queen, I think it's called, um, is shows a kind of possible alternate uh, path that America could have taken if automobiles we're not taken up as the primary form of transport in cities. They have like a, a utopian type setting where a trolley car, tram, train type things transverse a, 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 a more paradise-like um, landscape around cities. Um, and people who drive cars are kind of like these foaming at the mouth terrorists who must be shot to stop their madness from, from taking over the world. Um, other stories... Uh, let me see, I'll just jog my mind here. Um, oh yes, thus we thrust, frustrate Charlemagne. Charlemagne. Um, an interesting story, there's a bunch of experts, self proclaimed experts, try to alter history by uh, various technological means and um, every time uh, they try it they actually do change things but uh, it's so subtle and so um, or that they uh, actually change at the same time and they don't actually see the changes. It's quite an amusing story and it really caught my imagination. Um, of the rest, um, Ride a Tin Can, it's an interesting kind of first contact story between some uh, some um, anthropologist type people and a, and a local race on, a, on another planet. Um, has quite a dark edge to that one. Um, yeah, like I said, the first dozen or so stories in this book, are, or 10 or 12 stories, are, are pretty good. After that, I think the quality kind of falls off, it must have been like into the 1970s. Um, he's given more t space, more um, room in, to um, develop a story and I don't think it actually always pays off. There's, there's a really long one about a kind of alternate history um, pioneer in television uh, um, inventor who created these dramas and they're still available to see today if you have the right technology and there's kind of a a subtext of a, his relationship uh, falling apart with a, a female actor. Um, it just meanders along, goes really nowhere. I, I enjoyed the imagination of it, but it just it just didn't seem so great. And that was my main um, problem with a lot of these later stories. Um, they're just too much. There's there's like a clever point made quite early on, and then he just kind of continued on, adding on to it unnecessarily. Um, but overall, there is a lot of imagination and wonder in this book, especially the first 10 or so stories. Um, like, 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 and um, there are introductions to each of the stories by some major luminaries of science fiction. Some of the introductions are new to this collection, some were lifted from earlier collections. Um, you probably can tell that because of some of the people who actually did. Um, I started out reading the introductions, but after about two or three of them, I found that the introductions were actually giving away major plot points. So, and and, and it was ruining the surprises and the, and the wonder of the stories for me. So I, I stopped reading them, and I only read them afterwards. Um, so in the end, an enjoyable read um, if you like fantasy, if you like science fiction. The science fiction is more of a facade in a lot of the stories. They could have been set anywhere. Just a um, attempt to say this is not now, this is uh, sometime in the future this might happen or this is another planet so that these people may be discovered, that type of thing. Um, it's not hard science fiction, it's not really detailed science fiction. Like I said, it's more tall tales, uh, twilight zone, that type of thing. I think I've repeated myself several times now. So that is the, be the best of R.A. Lafferty um, by R.A. Lafferty. Thank you and we'll see you next time.